This week has been the craziest one in space history, filled with an emotional roller coaster of highs and lows. First, we witnessed Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket launch for the first time in history after countless delays and technical issues. Five, four, one. Lift off. On the very same day, SpaceX's Starship launched for the seventh time, and in an incredible feat, the mechanical arms of Mechazilla successfully caught the Super Heavy booster for the second time. Tower for catch. Booster coming in. Get down ready to, for that boom, Kate. Down to three engines. But just when we thought this historic day couldn't get any better, disaster struck. The Starship upper stage experienced a catastrophic failure, not just a minor explosion, but a complete obliteration, raining debris over an island in what looked like a scene straight out of a sci-fi disaster movie. Now SpaceX has revealed the cause of this tragic incident, shedding light on what went wrong and how they plan to prevent it in the future. We'll dive into all the details in this video, so before we delve any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on this incredible journey through space exploration. On January 16th, 2025, SpaceX conducted its seventh test flight of the Starship rocket, launching from the Starbase facility in Brownsville, Texas. The initial phase of the flight proceeded smoothly, showcasing the advancements made in the rocket's design and capabilities. Approximately two and a half minutes into the flight, the Super Heavy booster completed its burn and separated from the Starship upper stage. In a remarkable demonstration of precision engineering, the booster executed a controlled descent back to the launch site. Utilizing SpaceX's chopstick arms, the Super Heavy was successfully caught and secured, marking the second time SpaceX achieved this feat. Following the separation, the Starship upper stage continued its ascent, aiming to reach an altitude of approximately 90 miles and achieve a speed of 13,245 miles per hour. The mission plan included the deployment of 10 Starlink simulator satellites intended to test the deployment mechanisms for future satellite missions. However, at approximately 8.5 minutes into the flight, communication with the Starship upper stage was unexpectedly lost. Shortly thereafter, the vehicle experienced a catastrophic failure, resulting in an explosion over the Turks and Caicos Islands. The disintegration of the spacecraft created a dramatic visual, with glowing debris raining down, reminiscent of a meteor shower. Preliminary investigations by SpaceX indicated that the explosion was likely caused by a significant oxygen or fuel leak in the aft section of the Starship. This leak may have led to a buildup of pressure beyond the structural limits of the vehicle, culminating in the explosion. In response to the incident, Musk addressed the situation on social media, stating, Preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. He further added, Apart from obviously double-checking for leaks, we will add fire suppression to that volume and probably increase vent area. Despite the setback, Musk expressed optimism about future flights, noting, Nothing so far suggests pushing next launch past next month. The explosion had immediate repercussions beyond the mission itself. Debris from the disintegrated Starship upper stage fell over the Turks and Caicos Islands, prompting the Federal Aviation Administration to issue temporary flight restrictions in the area. Several commercial flights were diverted or delayed to ensure passenger safety, highlighting the broader implications of such in-flight anomalies. In the aftermath of the incident, SpaceX emphasized its commitment to learning from the test flight. This explosion will definitely not happen in the next launches, because SpaceX has an impressive track record of learning from every test flight. Not a single Starship launch mistake has been repeated so far. They have always improved upon previous designs and systems. Out of all seven Starship launches conducted so far, it's surprisingly the fifth flight that stands out as the most successful overall. What makes Flight 5 so remarkable is not just its smooth execution, 
but also how it set a benchmark for what Starship could achieve. Like the seventh flight, Flight 5 also managed to catch the Super Heavy booster with Mechazilla, SpaceX's towering chopstick arms. Where Flight 5 outshines Flight 7 is in the performance of the upper stage. Unlike Flight 7, which ended with the Starship upper stage exploding over the Turks and Caicos Islands, Flight 5 saw the upper stage complete its mission successfully. It followed a flawless trajectory and splashed down in the ocean exactly as planned. Flight 7, however, encountered several significant issues that overshadowed its successes. At T-2 hours, the fueling process began. SpaceX loaded the booster with supercooled liquid oxygen and liquid methane, carefully monitoring the pressurization of the tanks. Engineers also verified the structural integrity of the heat shield tiles on Starship, which had been updated to improve thermal resistance during re-entry. At T-minus one hour, the final go-no-go -no -go poll was conducted. Each team leader confirmed their system's readiness, from propulsion to guidance and navigation. The results were positive across the board, signaling that the mission was proceeding as planned. The live broadcast began, with SpaceX providing real-time updates and visuals of the rocket on the launch pad. At T-10 minutes, the automated launch sequence was initiated. The launch tower's chopstick arms were retracted to their holding positions, ensuring a clear path for the rocket's ascent. Engineers monitored the countdown closely, watching for any anomalies. At T-minus two minutes, the rocket's autonomous systems took over, with the onboard computers finalizing pre-launch diagnostics. At T-minus ten seconds, the Raptor engines ignited in a staggered sequence, generating a deafening roar and a bright plume of exhaust. The engines ramped up to full power, producing a combined thrust of 16.7 million pounds. At T-0, the clamps holding the Super Heavy booster in place were released, and the rocket began its ascent. The initial phase of the launch was smooth. The Super Heavy booster performed flawlessly, propelling the Starship vehicle into the sky with unprecedented power. The live feed provided breathtaking views of the rocket climbing through the atmosphere, leaving a trail of fire and smoke. The Raptor engines operated at optimal efficiency, with no signs of instability or performance degradation. At T plus two minutes, the rocket passed through max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. This milestone was crucial as it demonstrated the structural resilience of both the booster and the spacecraft. At T plus three minutes, the main engine cutoff occurred. The super-heavy booster shut down its engines, completing its primary role in the mission. Moments later, the booster separated from the Starship spacecraft, which continued its trajectory using its own Raptor engines. The separation was seamless, marking another successful step in the mission. The focus then shifted to the booster's descent and recovery. Equipped with grid fins for stability, the booster began its controlled fall back to Earth. SpaceX's engineers monitored its trajectory closely, making real-time adjustments to ensure it would land precisely on the launch pad. This phase was particularly critical, as it tested the updated guidance systems and the capability of the chopstick arms to catch the booster. Meanwhile, the Starship vehicle continued its flight, carrying ten Starlink simulators. These mock satellites were designed to replicate the size and weight of actual Starlink satellites, providing valuable data for future deployments. The spacecraft followed a suborbital trajectory, reaching its intended altitude before beginning its descent. At T plus six minutes, the booster approached the launch site. The grid fins worked in tandem with the Raptor engines to align the booster with the designated landing zone. The chopstick arms extended, preparing to catch the massive rocket. The live feed captured the booster's dramatic descent, showcasing the precision of SpaceX's engineering. At T plus seven minutes, the booster successfully landed, with the chopstick arms catching it midair and securing it to the launch tower. The booster was then safely lowered onto the pad for post-flight inspections. The Starship vehicle continued its descent, with the upgraded heat shield tiles performing exceptionally well, protecting the spacecraft from the intense heat of re-entry. But just as the mission seemed to be proceeding flawlessly, an unexpected event occurred. At approximately 8.5 minutes into the flight, telemetry from the upper stage was abruptly lost. 
Moments later, the vehicle exploded, breaking apart during re-entry over the Turks and Caicos Islands. The debris scattered across the sky, creating a spectacle that resembled a meteor shower. Witnesses in the region described the scene as both mesmerizing and unnerving, with fragments of the spacecraft lighting up the night sky as they burned upon re-entry. Initial investigations point to several potential causes for this catastrophic failure. One possible issue may have arisen during the propellant venting process. Toward the end of the burn, excess liquid oxygen is typically vented to maintain balance and stability. A leak or an improper venting sequence in the aft section could have created an unstable environment, potentially leading to a combustion event in an area that should have remained inert. We'll share more updates about the cause of this issue as we uncover them. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.